News 5 Live, more details surrounding the murder of a UB lecturer. The Attorney General says government is in no hurry to carry out redistricting exercise before the next general elections. And Belizeans share the meaning of Christmas while a Benke Viejo housewife wins a $10,000 shopping spree. Details of these stories and more coming up in tonight's newscast.
Five Live for Tuesday, December 24th. I am Marlene Cuellar. 57-year-old Anthony Brown was found dead inside his home in Elridgeville in the Toledo district on Monday. The lecturer of the University of Belize in Punta Gorda had been bound at the hands and feet and was stabbed multiple times. Sometime around midday, police were called to Brown's residence near the outskirts of town where they observed his lifeless body. A preliminary investigation reveals that Brown, who returned to Belize from the United States upon retiring several years ago, was attacked by a pair of men who inflicted the fatal injuries to his body. Brown's body remains at the Punta Gorda Hospital pending an autopsy. A criminal investigation into the murder of the UB lecturer is ongoing. A second person has been arraigned for the July 16, 2019 murder of clothing vendor Jose Diaz. Leroy Halls, who was initially charged for abetment to murder in this homicide, appeared before Chief Magistrate Sharon Frazier this morning where he was read a single charge of murder. No plea was taken and Halls was remanded to prison until January 16, 2020. It is alleged that Halls, along with Emerson Garnett, killed Diaz at his place of business on Cemetery Road in Belize City. The government of Belize is the defendant in a constitutional challenge brought before the Supreme Court by the Belize Peace Movement. The pending legal matter revolves around the need for a redistricting exercise to redistribute the number of registered voters per electoral district considering the existing disparities. While the matter is considered to be live before the Chief Justice, Attorney General Michael Parafit has been guarded in his comments on the case. Suffice to say that government has no plan to carry out the countrywide exercise prior to the next general elections. As far as I know, um, the government is not intent on doing any redistricting before the November elections of 2020. But speaking in general terms, would you agree that the spirit and the letter of the Constitution is being undermined, violated, with the way things are now set up. The court will determine that issue. That is what is before the court right now. Uh, would you be able to say how long uh, such an exercise would likely take? You mean the, the, the court matter? Restricting if, if one were to be oh, held. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't. I have, I have no experience in that area. I wouldn't know how long that would take. But isn't it a factor that the locus of, of, of power? political power, the locus of political power is in Belize City, which has a disproportionate number of seats because the, the setup of the political directorate is city-centric. All our prime ministers so far have come from Belize City. The court would determine that very issue. That is what is before the court. The Belize Chamber of Commerce and Industry has formally requested a copy of the contract signed by Emer Hernandez, who recently signed on to an agreement to pave the coastal road. The request is being facilitated by the Ministry of Works, which is in receipt of the correspondence from the private sector organization. But couldn't they have sought details of the contract via the Freedom of Information Act? It's an avenue that has proven frustrating in other pursuits. However, Attorney General Michael Parafit maintains that the route the chamber has taken is tantamount to playing to the gallery. These people should know without letters they write, just ask for it under the Freedom of Information Act. I mean, why, why, why come on TV and write a letter and say, oh, we want, it's just grandstanding. If you really want information from government, you write under the Freedom of Information Act and you will get it. And they will get it once they request it under the proper process. We don't go on TV and say, oh, well, we want this, and, oh, well, we want that. I mean, that's not how you as supposedly a professional organization is supposed to behave. Sir. 
you know that, um, and perhaps as a state of any government, to have an adversarial relationship with the Chamber of Commerce, with many civil society players, the NTUCB, yeah. etc. Right. However, uh, there is a particular role for the Chamber because the Chamber ultimately represents business persons. Yeah. Business persons are the persons from whom you all raise your campaign financing. We to do? build up your war chest. Okay, we do? Well, I, don't I, know. I don't know about I any war chest or raising any finances for the business community, but that, that's your comment. Go ahead. I'm saying that shouldn't you all try to be, instead of confrontational, more conciliatory with this group on confidence building, since the UDP does not have the strongest record as being private sector friendly? It doesn't? <laughs> You, 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 you're making well. You, you have your reasons why you make Kirsty. I don't know anything about that. Um, we deal with everybody the, the same way. Um, I, I, the issue I always have with the chamber is that they think that they can run the country better than the people who are elected to do so. The Attorney General, despite being rather snappy when it comes to the Chamber of Commerce, says that it's not about purposely being confrontational, but that the business organization tends to want to manage the affairs of government. It's not a matter of not having a relationship with them or even being adversarial with them, but they want to, whenever business people want to be politicians or politicians want to take over business people's business, you're going to have a clash. We listen to everybody, we listen, to, we try to facilitate everything, even if it gets to the point where the Prime Minister has to sit down with any entity and negotiate and talk and come to some kind of agreement. But we were elected by the people to serve the people. So we are the ones that the people look to and we have to be responsible for everybody in the country, not just the business community. The recent online attack aimed at Plus TV's news director Shasta Wade has once again brought into focus a need for regulations to govern the social media space. Enacting legislation has been a slow process and according to Attorney General Michael Parafit, his ministry is awaiting a response from the business community regarding a draft of the legislation. I had given the legislation to every sector in, 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 in the society, including the opposition and some senators, Senator Zaraga wanted it. He wanted to look at it and he wanted to distribute it within the business community for any feedback. We are waiting for that feedback. We always get accused of passing laws and not checking with them. Well, we have checked with them and they're taking longer than government bureaucracy to get back to us. So we have to wait until they give us their input before we decide on, on a final draft. I would like to see and when it comes back, then we will have our own um, input. One of my pet desires is to see that it make it an offense punishable by 10 years in prison to create a fake profile. <laughs> huh? You I mean, have been victimized by that. I mean, I mean, come back, create a fake profile. I mean, if how can I hold you responsible or sue you or, or punish you if I don't know who is the person writing what they're writing online. So in my, in my belief, you should be penalized for creating a profile and or use a fake profile. And any computer or machine that you use to facilitate use of that fake profile should be confiscated by the government. So in other words then, have you speak and let everybody know you're the one talking. The Bar Association is challenging the suspension of President Sherilyn Vidal from meetings of the Judicial and Legal Services Commission. Vidal, who is also the Director of Public Prosecutions, has had been sidelined indefinitely from the activities of the JLSC by Chief Justice Kenneth Benjamin, who is also the Chair of the Commission. As such, a claim has been filed against the presiding judge of the High Court by attorney Andrew Marshallek, who is a member of the legal fraternity. The composition of the JLSC includes the chair of the Public Services Commission, the president of the Bar Association, as well as the Solicitor General. Excluding the Bar representative has led to concerns being raised about judicial appointments. What should happen or could happen in the situation where the bar is taking the chair of the um, Judicial, Judicial and Legal, and Legal Services, Services Commission, Commission. Um, because the DPP, as the president as well, uh, is not being allowed to attend meetings? I don't comment on matters before the court. <laughs> it was filed um, a week or so ago. 
and we have to be the ones preparing the, the, the brief and defending. So I, I can't comment on matters before the court. The court will decide. They will determine whether or not it was unconstitutional for the chief justice to so-called not have the, um, the, the, the DPP as the president of the bar sitting on JLSE matters. They, the court will have to determine that. Coming up, what's the delay in repairing the bullet tree road? And ground is broken for new school buildings.
During Friday's sitting of the House of Representatives, Area Representative for Cayo Northeast Orlando Landy Habet brought up an issue regarding the Bullet Tree Road in his division. According to Habet, access to the San Ignacio Hospital, which is located along the Bullet Tree Road, poses challenges and risks to drivers. He says the conditions of the road are so bad that drivers need to exercise extreme caution. Habet says that the promise to fix the road was made by Health Minister Pablo Marin. Madam Speaker, in March of this year, during budget debate, the Honorable Minister of Health mentioned to me that they had secured the monies and that plans were in place to fix this road and the esplanade in front of the hospital by the end of this year. Lo and behold, we are almost at the end of the year and this has not been done. Um, Monday, Madam Speaker, I went with one of my colleagues to do some measurements because I knew we had a house meeting today and so that I could present sort of a budget so that we can understand that it's not a big, big uh, project and it can be done if, if there is the will to do so. Lo and behold, two days later, a machine was there grading the place, graded off all the stones and made a mess of the whole place, especially due to the rain. Madam Speaker, this is the situation of the road leading up to the hospital. This is mushy. Madam Speaker, it is a 45 degree gradient according to the surveyor, and so vehicles cannot go up the road to the hospital, and when they come down, they slide right onto the, right onto the, high, onto the, to the main road, which is the Bullet Tree Road. Well, yes, I'm coming to that part, leader. Madam Speaker, we did some measurements and it's a little bit over 5,500 square yards that would have to be cemented or paved. Estimates that, I've that I have from a contractor, Madam Speaker, is for about 845 cubic yards of material. In a, in a point of order, um, I did mention to, to the honorable member um, uh, that that we are going just a minute. Thank you. Yeah, that I'm, that we have funds, but to see for inside of the of the compound, not on the road. The Ministry of Health doesn't have to do anything about the road. But yes, I did mention to him that we have funds and the funds are coming in, but due to procedures, it take a little while. But we are going to fix inside. According to Habet, upgrading the portion of road leading to the San Ignacio Community Hospital should not cost local government a huge chunk of money. Minister of Works Rene Montero says that efforts have been made to upgrade the portion of the road, but works had to be halted due to the weather. Information that I have received also from the hospital is that PAHO had also volunteered to help with doing a parking facility, some landscaping and other beautification. But Madam Speaker, what I want is also that if the Prime Minister will really look at this because apparently from other sources we're not getting the assistance, but we really need the help. You can't have a hospital and access to the community hospital serving three towns and 28 villages with a road looking like this. So the mayor attempted to fix this road, but unfortunately, Madam Speaker, he said it to rain. So what can we do? Right? Instead of coming here to praise the mayor for attempting to fix that road, you come and criticize. We have no, we have no control over the weather. All week, Madam Speaker, it has been raining, so the work has to be stopped. But indeed, Madam Speaker, we do intend to fix that road because we do realize the importance of that road, Madam Speaker. In an effort to improve the quality of education in Belize, the Ministry of Education has embarked on constructing 35 schools across the country. Ocean Academy in Key Cocker Village will be expanded and a preschool, primary and high school will be built in San Pedro Town. This gives the students of both islands greater access to education. The ground was broken last week and Hippolyta Novello has the following story. Ground was broken last week for the construction of two education facilities, one in Keycocker Village and the other in San Pedro Town. A preschool and a state-of-the-art facility will be built at Ocean Academy in Keycocker. In San Pedro, the Ministry of Education has secured funds for the construction of a preschool, primary school, and high school. 
Education Minister Patrick Faber says the construction of the schools forms part of the larger project that the ministry has embarked on. The government, through the Caribbean Development Bank, is spending uh, 70 something million dollars and the government is putting its own in that so I think overall we're spending 80 plus million dollars and as I said we're building 35 new schools across the country 22 of them are preschools I just saw Miss Amlin shared with me the drawing of what these preschools will look like this is not a small time preschool. This is a state of the art facility and you are going to have one of those facilities right here on Kikaka. Cheerleader of Kikaka Village, Talina Villanueva Pot, underscored the importance of additional facilities to complement the existing Ocean Academy. Today is a very historic day for Kikaka as we break ground for our very own secondary education compound. This is a very heartwarming feeling as Ocean Academy students will no longer dream of what it is to have their own science lab or their own basketball court or their own area to stock their kayaks. They will soon live it. Ocean Academy now gives us an alternative, one we didn't have back then. And it also gives the less fortunate an opportunity to an education. As, attending student, as an attending student in the city, it did not only require hard work, but it also great financial backing from parents. Ocean Academy provides a level of alleviation for families. And it provides the Kikaker community with hope that we are now able to educate future educa generations right here at home. According to Belize Royal South Air Representative Manuel Heredia Jr., arriving at this point was no easy task. The expansion of Ocean Academy, it was not easy, but thanks to the support of our Minister of Education, we were back and forth, back and forth, until finally we were able to identify the land on which the high school will be sitting. We are very, very proud to say that we will have a state-of-the-art building for the Ocean Academy with a little over five acres of land to be able to expand in the future. Reporting for News 5, Hippolyta Novello. Downtown Belize City and in all municipalities across the country, residents are out and about doing their last minute shopping in pre preparation for the Christmas holidays. As these shoppers go about their merry way, they can do so with little fear of being targeted because additional officers have been placed on the ground as part of the police department's crime prevention strategy. Commissioner of Police Chester Williams shares some details. It's time of the year where we anticipate and rightfully so that not only Belize City but across the country, shoppers will be busy doing their respective Christmas shoppings. Merchants will have an um, amount of cash on them because of the constant sales that they're doing during the, during the course of the day. And uh, as well as delivery personnel, delivery trucks, etc., may also be moving around with large quantity of money. And so what we try to do around this time is to see how we can bring officers who would normally be off to come back and uh, work extra, and it is called extraneous duties. And uh, at the end of the Christmas season, then they are paid for the extra that they work. But Again, this is done with a view to ensure that we have an adequate number of officers, particularly within the commercial areas, to make sure that the shoppers shop in a safe atmosphere and that the merchants do business in a safe environment. In the case of delivery trucks, Kampa Williams says that delivery men can request assistance from police while doing deliveries in respective areas as an added security measure. Crime prevention, however, is not only incumbent on the police department. Williams shared tips for shoppers and merchants during this time. Criminals do anticipate that they'll have money on board. And so they will take the opportunity once it presents itself to rob. So we advise try to accept payment in checks instead of cash. Um, do not carry a large amount of cash on you. Stagger your um, 
your movements, don't have a set time, do not allow any and anybody within your company to know when delivery will be made, especially where cash will be picked up. You, you try to limit that to as uh, a small number of person or, or persons as possible. Because the least amount of persons person know, the better it will be. The more persons know, then it opens more the possibility that um, the information will get out to the criminals and then they may try to take the opportunity to go and rob. So in terms of the stores, we advise you to do your daily deposits, maybe two, three times a day. Do not keep large amount of cash um, within your stores. To the shoppers, do not move around with large amount of cash. Do not go to the ATM and uh, walk out of there with your money in your hands. Do not park your vehicle in dark areas and have to walk to the vehicle at night time alone. Try to shop with somebody else. You know, um, these are things that if you do, will help you. After the break, PM Barrow and opposition leader John Brisenio share their annual Christmas messages. And News 5 takes to the streets where Belizeans give Christmas shout outs to friends and family. Once again, Christmas is upon us, and the magic, the golden light, the elixir of the season is abroad in our country. This is a time of joy. It is a time of redemption. It is a time when neighbors that have not spoken, families that have been divided, friends that have been estranged, all come together. There is healing, there is mending, there is melding, and it is all a consequence of the love that is at the center of Christmas, a love that is wondrous, a love that brings comfort to the afflicted, a love that is miraculous because it is the love of Christ Jesus, the love of God. So let us rejoice and be merry. Let us celebrate and feel good and do good. Let us clasp and cleave to each other. And let us give thanks for the many blessings that the Almighty has scattered throughout this land. I therefore wish a happy Christmas to all Belizeans and to every person of every race, creed, and nationality living in this amazing country of ours. Merry Christmas, everyone.
Special Christmas messages from Prime Minister Jean Barrow and leader of the opposition John Briseño are currently being aired across the media. But we take special time to focus on what our country's political leaders are sharing with the people of Belize. Both leaders are spreading the joy of the season and a warm encouragement to spend time with family and friends in celebration of the birth of Christ. Once again, Christmas is upon us and the magic, the golden light, the elixir of the season is abroad in our country. This is a time of joy. It is a time of redemption. It is a time when neighbors that have not spoken families that have been divided, friends that have been estranged, all come together. There is healing, there is mending, there is melding, and it is all a consequence of the love that is at the center of Christmas, a love that is wondrous, a love that brings comfort to the afflicted, a love that is miraculous because it is the love of Christ Jesus, the love of God. So let us rejoice and be merry. Let us celebrate and feel good and do good. Let us clasp and cleave to each other. And let us give thanks for the many blessings that the Almighty has scattered throughout this land. Season's greetings. This is a time when Christians across our beautiful Belize and worldwide celebrate the great hope that arrived with the birth of Christ. We are all aware of the scripture reading in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 21, when the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him that Mary would give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Something I love the most at this holiday time are the beautiful smiles on so many of our faces at this time of year. Even those who may be struggling and those stressed by trying to meet the many expenses at this time of year can find some reason to smile. Know that at this time all Belizeans think of some way to help the many of our people who are suffering from poverty. We should all do what we can to help those most in need, not just at Christmas time, but all year long. A News 5 crew was back on the streets of downtown Belize City to find out from shoppers just what Christmas means to them. While the holiday for some is about spending time with the family, for others it was about sharing and giving back. There were a few whose celebration is rooted in Christ. We even heard from the little ones who sent greetings to their mommies and daddies. First of all, I just want to thank God for having us here today and um, ask of his blessings for us to see why he is the reason for the season, which is tomorrow, no? Um, just want to say Merry Christmas to all my family members, you know, especially to my son who I have with me today, I'm a lean nephew, you know, just, you know, because the season now is all about them, our time, you know, so um, Merry Christmas to all Belizean home and abroad and hope it is a safe one. Christmas for me and my family is, um, it's all about sharing, caring, spending that time with the loved ones, um, and not to forget Christ. So, uh, how has everything been going for you guys? Are you guys ready for tonight, but for tomorrow? Yes, we're preparing, we're doing our last minute shopping, and then my, my babies and I will go home, and then we'll finish the cleaning and stuff. Anybody want to send greetings out right now? I would like to say um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to my family at home and abroad, my FMS faculty, my, my family at UB. I hope you guys have a blessed and safe um, Christmas. Kind of tired, but I'm ready. Yeah. Ready for this one day, Abraham. <laughs> what is Christmas for you and your family? Yeah, extra caring and sharing, because we share and care all through the year, but this is just a good, a little mile extra. You want to send greetings to? to my granddaughter, Regan, to Anya, and the other rest are grandkids. Down south, too many to mention the name, and my entire sister and brothers, and to my gentleman Teofilo, thanks for taking care of me for the past 19 years. I grew up in the church, so Christmas for me is about the birth of Jesus Christ, and of course, giving. Merry Christmas! When we 
you come back, meet the winner of a $10,000 shopping spree from Smart and Course.
Back to you. A family from Benque Viejo will be enjoying Christmas a little better this year because on Monday, Edita Albeno won a $10,000 shopping spree courtesy of Smarten Courts. Today, Albeno, her husband and two children traveled to Belize City to collect a prize and to choose items to take home. News 5's Dwayne Moody reports. A housewife from Benque Viejo del Carmen is the lucky winner of a smart raffle. Through a partnership with Courts Belize, Edita Albeno won a $10,000 shopping spree to take home whatever she likes from Courts. The grand prize is just in time for the Christmas holidays and is the culmination of several weeks of great prizes. It didn't start off as a Christmas raffle, but uh, after all the great minds came together, we said, okay, we're going to do a grand raffle, a mega raffle for a Belizean family that we would give them the opportunity to have $10,000 shopping spree at courts uh, because it is the Belizean culture that around Christmas time you want your home to look new you everybody's out getting curtains getting flooring uh, beyond the kitchen essentials and so with that said we wanted a Belizean family to start 2020 uh, new and hoping that that family would have a new uh, prosperous and remarkable 2020. Every Monday since November 11th we have been selecting a winner that entered this raffle through three mediums. The first was through texting in to the UN shark code uh, with an entry costing only a dollar and the second medium was for any prepaid customer that spent five dollars whether they called internationally whether they call, made national calls within the Belize uh, within Belize or text use their text bundles bought bundles bought data whether they roamed um, they were entered and once they used five dollars in any of those services they were entered automatically into the raffle and the third medium was for the broadband customers for Albano and her family they are still processing the win she has her eyes set on some items but says that her children will also be able to get a gift of their choice. When Ms. Sabido call, um, as usual, we don't believe it. I asked her like it was a joke and she said no. Well, I still didn't believe it. After she told me, hey, Miss, you, it's real, you have to come to Belize City tomorrow. Then I said, you, it's real. I said, yes, it's real. The, when the thing it catch me that when she told me you have to dress up, I said, for what? <laughs> <laughs> then you will be in, in live TV and I'm here so it's true uh -huh. and I'm very excited for it and I am here with my family yeah. and uh, I thank Smart the first place and courts and especially Jesus Christ because he's the one who blessed me and I'm a you could say I'm a lucky winner of all like a housewife I will um, get my washing machine, a TV, my basic things. Okay. And like it's Christmas around, so I will give them a little gift to my children. Sales rep Melanie Dunn says that Courts has some great deals for the season, which Albena will be able to take advantage of. From TVs to furniture, electronic devices, and even household appliances, the lucky winner can choose as many once it falls within the budgeted amount. We are here to bring value home to that lucky winner, which is Miss Adita Albeno, and she's all the way from Kyle, right? And this lucky customer here, in partner with Smart, we collaborated, and we're giving ten, um, five thousand dollars as well as Smart, and we are here to we are here to put that smile on Miss um, Albino's face today for this brand new millennium. Okay, so she gets to choose whatever items she wants in the store. Yes, she gets to choose whatever items that we have in our store, whatever items that she wants, as long as that item does not exceed ten thousand dollars she can choose and as you guys may know at courts we are all about our different promotions doing Moody for News 5 and that's the news don't forget that tonight's broadcast is available in both text and streaming video at channel 5 belizecom you can also connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news 5 live I'm Marlene Cuellar thanks for joining us and from our family here at news 5 to yours Merry Christmas and good night.